Hello, hello, hello. How are you going, Jeff? Um, yeah. Uh, so we're just going to be waiting a couple more minutes for people to arrive. Uh, but what I might do is I might just uh, quickly touch base with you, just to see how you are and see how your business is going and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just click allow to talk. My project is is going slowly, but it's 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 making progress. But um, I'm going to be looking for for work for for the other side of my business, which is basically unattended uh, sales consultancy, unattended retail. Uh huh. Cool, cool. So uh, yeah, I just look what I when I took this project on, I I had no idea of the of the amount of restriction and regulation and so on. But um, look, we. We're getting there. We're getting awesome. there, and, and it looks like we are going to uh, a major um, organisation is going to come on board um, with its members to support us. So I think we're going to be okay. Excellent, excellent. So can you remind me about what kind of project uh, this is exactly? I don't want to tell, talk about this project because the okay it's still commercially sensitive. Oh, but, right. No worries. No worries. But, um, yeah. Ha happy to tell you about the other side of the business. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So you're going to focus a little bit more on the sales side of stuff? Um, the... Well, just that, just that it's very opportune at the moment for, for a number of reasons. One, uh, I was looking at the retail crime statistics this year. Mm -hmm. I follow a couple of the uh, sort of retail commentators. And one of the things that's that's very very prevalent at the moment is uh, the retail uh, crime statistics, and we lost something like seven point two billion dollars. Retailers lost seven point two billion dollars to shoplifting last year. Wow, which is that's uh, which, which is a hell of a lot. And you know we're we're all paying for that. You know we mm -hmm. we talk about we, we moan about the price of beer going up and that sort of stuff, but the number of bottle shop cases where people walk in, take a couple of bottles of scotch off the shelf and just walk out again uh, is is increasing daily. Mm. Wow, really? That's crazy. Didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I think to cover to cover those kind of losses, the price of every of all that sort of liquor store stuff is going up and it's, it certainly shows. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then there's obviously geopolitical forces at play as well. Um, so there's quite a few macroeconomic uh, shifts happening at the moment, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, cool, cool. Well, great to catch up. Um, we've just had someone else join the call, uh, Fatih, um, which sounds a little bit like a, a Turkish name, if I'm not wrong. So, um, Fatih, if you want to... Um, what, what I might do is I might click allow to talk. And if you'd like to maybe introduce yourself and the kind of business that you're in, um, then we'd be obviously happy to hear uh, a little bit about uh, your background and what, you know, and also what, what drew you to this particular presentation. Hello, Bati. How, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, so what kind of business are you in? I'm in a, a premium um, towel business. Uh, we are social and uh, environmental um, conscious. Yep. Still a startup pre-revenue, uh, yep. but uh, yep. I'm I'm uh, off um, after two decades of buying luxury goods with a, a high-end retailer. Uh, yep, yep. So I decided to start this business and uh, obviously B2B will be my initial uh, go-to market. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. quick quickest money uh, pr until mm -hmm. I put my brand on the map. Uh, uh, probably going to take about a couple of years. That being mm -hmm. said, if I'm all lucky, everything goes well. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, that's fun. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, welcome along. Um, so, what kind of um, drew you to wanting to attend this morning or this 
actually it's slightly afternoon, isn't it? In are you guys both from Western Australia or a bit of Queensland, bit of Northern oh, Territory? Uh, uh, love from uh, Canada, Toronto. It's uh, oh, you're from Canada. Eleven okay. p.m. right now. Yeah. Oh, it's eleven p.m. Okay, cool. It seems that uh, the um, my webinars uh, kind of travel across the entire world these days. It's quite incredible. Yeah. yeah so I the really core appreciate folk, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll be able to use a lot of the uh, the same kind of approaches and um, insights in your your local market. Typically, um, these presentations are for for Australians, like uh, Western Australians, Queenslanders, and Northern Territorians. Occasionally, mm -hmm. though, we have people come in from the US. Uh, so, uh, got to be careful because I <laughs> you never know where people are coming from these days into these yeah. uh, workshops and webinars. Um, awesome, awesome. Well, welcome along. Um, we'll just wait maybe one more minute, um, just in case there are others. Uh, otherwise, we'll just assume that these guys are busy and they'll be watching the, a lot of people actually watch the recordings um, as well. And uh, a lot of people actually listen to them within their car, which is a bit interesting. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, my voice doesn't cause too many you know, crashes or, <laughs> you know, traffic incidents of any kind. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or would like to contribute in any way, then um, feel free to raise your hand and we will, um, I'll unmute you and you can ask a question or make a comment or, you know, maybe ask, you know, how does this uh, apply to me and my business given I'm in X, Y, and Z? industry um, and I will try and come up with an intelligent answer to your question. And we've also got a Maureen joining us. Maureen, if you'd like, I'll, I will unmute you, give you the opportunity to perhaps introduce yourself and your business and also uh, which state you're from. Uh, we've got someone from Canada even here, which is not <laughs> yeah quite un, uh, unexpected. Um, so yeah, uh, introduce yourself if, if you would like. Yes, my name is Maureen and I live on the amazing Gold Coast and I'm going to sit in the park and have this meeting. Uh, make anybody jealous, bad luck. Um, and my business is I've, I've invented a um, helix foliator that you can use in the shower and mm -hmm. I've invented it here on the Gold Coast and it's made here on the Gold Coast and there's nothing else like it in the world at this particular moment in time. <laughs> Fantastic. That's great. What part of the Gold Coast are you uh, joining us from, if you don't mind uh, me asking? Would you believe Burley Beach? Ah, uh, yeah. That's that makes you even more jealous? Well, that's, that's even worse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would move, but you know. <laughs> the, kookaburras, the kookaburras love it there. Uh, I remember being down there with a friend of mine. It's a very beautiful part of the world. So, yeah. It is um, good. How long have you been going with your business, Maureen? Well, it took me two years to set it, two years to design it and invent it. And that finally took place just after Christmas. So now I'm at a really, really early, early stage of getting it to market. So it's completed and I've had quite a few people use it and review it and say it's great. And mm. so sold it to family and friends. That's all so far because now I don't know how to market because my real profession is a nurse educator. And so this yeah. is a real step in a different world for me. And I have some marketing mm. money, but I don't know where to put it to be most effective. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Okay, well, um, today we'll be covering some material that might uh, – give you some of those insights. Um, we'll be, I'll be showing you uh, a business model canvas. And if you haven't done one of those before, definitely recommend you do one for this particular business. Um, it will um, cast a lot of light on potential uh, opportunities. Um, and yeah, it does cover marketing at a high level as well. Um, just one last person to talk to, but uh, welcome along Maureen. Uh, great to have you. Oh, people are all, uh, arriving now. So I'll just uh, get through the rest of them. Um, Klaus, if you'd like to perhaps introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the business that you're in um, and what drew you to today's session. 
Sure. So, yeah, um, my company is um, Dramoro, so dreamoro.com.au. We're a um, venture capital company and a professional services business that actually works with founders who have um, domain knowledge, so experience what they're trying to do, but don't have the breadth of technical or business skill to know how to bring their product to market. So I'm here to um, listen and learn and, um, you know, I guess potentially, you know, meet folks who are interested in a combination of um, capital or capability to help them define the right MVP and bring that product to market um, um, correctly. We focus on the healthcare and online media market as our primary market focus. Okay, cool. Sounds fantastic. Well, any questions along the way? Just put your hand up and I can, can either type it in or I can unmute. Um, got one more um, attendee just arrived uh, before we kick off, uh, Andrew H. Um, Andrew, if you'd like to quickly introduce yourself and um, and maybe just give us a quick introduction as to what kind of business that you're in. Oh, he's disappeared. Okay. Well, in that case, what we'll do is we'll get cracking. Um, he might reappear. Sometimes people drop off and then they rejoin. Um, and uh, yeah, that just tends to happen quite a bit. Awesome. So welcome along, um, everyone. And uh, yes, I've been relatively busy, but I've got plenty of interesting ideas to share with you uh, from what I've, uh, from my experience of having um, kind of worked with between two and 300 small businesses and startups over the last uh, three to five years. Um, and also what I've observed them doing, which I thought was pretty cool. In, in, in many ways. Um, so some of, some of the ideas are not necessarily my original ideas, but just what I've observed in the public domain that I thought, hmm, actually this really makes a lot of sense and is a pretty decent tactic um, that we can all kind of learn from. Right, okay. So uh, I will share my screen now and let's get cracking. So we've also had Lennon join us, so welcome to Lennon. Um, and uh, maybe at the end, we'll have the opportunity to hear a little bit more about what you do um, and kind of what drew you to the session. But um, for now, let's jump straight into the uh, core material. So finding business partners and co-founders on LinkedIn and QI Hub. So I created this one today um, just because I've seeing quite a bit of activity on LinkedIn and, and QI Hub that is kind of related to this idea of finding business partners and co-founders. And also I might be, I'll share with you one of the models that I've come up with that tends, seems to be working pretty well to uh, kind of create uh, help, yeah, where I kind of partner with uh, even pre-revenue at, at times, startups and small businesses. Um, to help each other kind of um, with that co-building process. So I've got a, a business, uh, I'm kind of a professional advisor, um, and there are other professional advisors that I kind of partner with in quite a sophisticated way so as to help accelerate their journeys. So the definition of what a business partner is or a co-founder is can vary quite considerably. Um, obviously, there's very traditional uh, interpretations of what these roles might entail. But there is also many different definitions and um, you can kind of, in some respect, kind of choose your own adventure and structure the relationship in ways that are mutually beneficial based on uh, the circumstances of those involved. So I'll, I'll, I'll discuss some of the kind of the circumstances and some of the dimensions of what I mean by that in the coming slides. Um, so... Of course, there are more places that you can find business partners and co-founders than just LinkedIn and QI Hub, and I'll touch on some of those other places so you might come into contact with um, these kind of individuals that might want to um, stay on a founding journey for you for a period of time. Um, uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd give you a quick overview just to give you some context of who we are and what we're doing. Um, so I'm 
part of Business Station. At the moment, I'm not a core employee, but I, I used to be in, in the past. And um, Business Station is, is a not-for-profit and it delivers a um, program called Digital Solutions, which you guys are all uh, welcome to join if you're in Queensland, Western Australia, or the, the Northern Territory. Um, so effectively, yeah, it's the government reinvesting funding um, into helps, helping small businesses and startups with their um, digital transformation journey. And that can take all different kinds of forms. I, my, yeah, the kind of tools that I like to introduce small businesses and, and startups to include obviously LinkedIn, but um, I like them to try to get the most out of Mural and Miro which are like online collaboration tools. So I show them how to use those a little bit. Well, a lot actually. <laughs> and um, also I like them to try and explore um, what kind of use case they could have for online speed networking, uh, just because Australia and of course Canada are such large places. Sometimes um, we are not able to be co-located at the exact time that uh, a speed a physical speed networking is happening or a, a regular speed networking is happening so there's also you know online speed networking events uh, which enable us to um, kind of exponentially expand our networks we've got a couple of um brick and mortar kind of offices and workshop spaces and incubators across western australia in particular these perth gosnells was wanneroo and Joondala, and sometimes we open them in queensland as well although we've got partner organizations. So Maureen's in um, uh, Burley. And so the closest one of our partners to her is the Gold Coast Innovation Hub, which you may already be aware of. Um, so they help us co-deliver uh, digital solutions. So my expertise is around business model optimization. So taking a look at uh, a small, um, small, and small businesses and startups um, business model and making sure that I understand how it all comes together. So help clarify that business model and then uh, with a view of optimizing it. Um, I also use a bunch of other tools, not just the business model canvas. So if you haven't seen the business model canvas before, I will, or you haven't seen one in a while, uh, it'll come up a few times in these slides uh, just to provide some additional um, kind of context to what I'm saying. And of course, yeah, all the uh, small business and startup strategy changes all the time. And I try to be on the cutting edge of, uh, you know, this kind of uh, push. Um, and also uh, my core focus when I engage one-on-one -on -one with uh, small businesses and startups is to help build their uh, entrepreneurial capabilities. So help them get better at being an entrepreneur um, by just giving them a whole bunch of ideas and insights and connections that will help them progress through that entrepreneurial capacity building journey that they're all on. So today's topic um, is about, you know, finding business partners and co-founders on LinkedIn. So we'll explore um, some of the reasons why people uh, want to actually add a business partner or a co-founder to their team. Um, and we'll also discuss some of the, the things and dynamics that are involved in getting it to work as well as it could do at different stages of that business building journey. Um, it is a lot about leveraging. So when you're starting a, a startup, you do need to rely on others. It is, it's not just you in the big bad world. Um, if it was, you'd probably fail immediately just because, you know, there's only so much one person can do. There's only so much one person can know and things are changing all the time. So, uh, you know, there's shifting sands of the, uh, you know, how consumers behave and, and um, what else, how the market is structured. It, yeah, doesn't allow us to have... Um, always a current understanding of what's happening within our startup um, at any given time. Um, so it's kind of promoting this idea of not just being obviously dependent, which would be, you know, being an employee, not just being independent and just trying to run your own thing without kind of collaborating with others, but the next level of kind of in, interconnectivity, which um, I would describe as being interdependent 
So how do we be interdependent in the world? How do we kind of leverage off others, you know, networks, insights, market intel and capabilities in a way that makes sense, in a way that's fair, in a way that's win-win? And how do we originate these relationships as well? That's an equally as important topic. Um, so I can share with you some insights on how I, I've managed to do that in the past. And I think, it, you know, particularly in regards to yourself, Klaus, you, you might find a lot of this material very useful um, in originating new relationships with, um, um, you know, uh, ventures and founders undergoing um, this business building journey at different stages. Um, cool. Continuing on. So um, it was quite interesting. Uh, sorry, the, uh, some, some of the text is in a different language, uh, but that's okay. Um, so the first question I like to pose is like, why, you know, what is your why, right? Why do people look for business partners and co-founders? And so one of the things that caught my, um, caught my attention, um, so I'm part of a whole bunch of different Facebook groups, and most of them are pretty useless most of the time. Um, and they're not very activated, but um, Danilo, he's since moved to Italy, um, back to Italy, but he posed a really interesting question in the Perth Startup Facebook group um, around what people were actually looking for in, in this group. And so, um, yeah, what people are not looking for <laughs> in Perth at this moment in time is mentors or coaches, interestingly enough and they're not even looking for it solutions or teams so you know going back 10 years everyone was trying to hire developers everywhere in the world and i think they still are to a certain extent but the core focus and the core interest of this particular group at this particular time was i'm looking for a business partner um and there's also another group in perth um which relates to co-founding opportunities. So within Facebook even, you can find ways and means of meeting potential co-founders. But I just thought that the contrast between 33% um, of people within this group looking for a business partner versus 1% for a mentor or a coach, that's striking, you know, that's a huge difference. And I shared that with our program manager and she had some interesting insights to share on that as well. Um, also, I've been to a co-founding event in London. So there was an accountant that was setting, was trying to help um, small businesses and startup founders who were solopreneurs kind of match, uh, have a matchmaking exercise to see if, you know, two people uh, who are working on something quite similar might come into contact with one another and start to actually create, co-create something together. Um, so based on my experience of interacting with founders, one of the, the reasons why um, they're looking for business partners and co-founders, um, um, one of these, right? So it either makes their life easier, um, it can help share, share the burden of commercializing their venture, because you know these things can take five, 10 years or even longer if you try to do it all yourself, uh, just because, you know, you, you're going on many, many, many learning curves. Yeah, so the third one is, yeah, to shorten their venture building journey. So the more, more mature the founder is, the more realistic they are about how long it might actually take for them to figure out how to uh, solve the um, kind of like the code to the combination lock <laughs> uh, and get their entire business model working um, efficiently and scaling. Um, does anyone have any other reasons why they might want to work uh, or to find a business partner or co-founder? Um, if you do, just maybe type it in the um, in the chat window and we can take a look at them later. Um, I guess another one could be um, they're hoping that a business partner or co-founder will bring um, some sort of resources, even investment into the into the mix. So that's why, yeah, connections is a big one, and that's that's what we'll cover on the next page. Different skill sets, we'll definitely cover that one on the next page as well. So I kind of split it across two pages. Yeah, those are very uh, very astute answers. Um, yeah, sometimes it's capital distribution, sometimes revenue opportunities, brand equity, sometimes um, 
you know, you can borrow brand equity or, or you know, benefit that way, or yeah, technology capability, um, a whole variety of different things, really. So um, a lot of founders, when they start their journey, feel like they don't necessarily need to learn too much, or maybe they don't want to be taught, but they're looking for someone like an equal to actually help kind of work collaboratively with them to actually um, accelerate their journey and um, leverage off one another. So who needs a mentor or a coach if you can find someone to do half the work for you? <laughs> That's the whole thing. Bartering skills and resources. Yeah, there's so many different things that you could potentially get from another human being um, who has a different skill set, different insight, different connections to you. So um, I took a look at uh, LinkedIn and I do have a way of actually, um, uh, at, at one stage I was actually um, automating the adding of founders in Queensland in particular and in WA to my um, LinkedIn. So I actually managed to rack up um, 722 people. Um, yeah, 722 people uh, who had the title of co-founder in my, in my network. That doesn't mean to say I know 722 co-founders, but it does mean that uh, I've been able to find them on LinkedIn. Um, another thing that I've seen people start to do in LinkedIn and other kind of platforms is to kind of post um, almost like job offers uh, related uh, and have the title co-founder. But sometimes that um, helps. I definitely know in, in Klaus's case, he's probably come across this uh, VC concept or the uh, you know early stage VC Ambler, and they do a lot of this. They post for founders um, as if it's like a job title, but that doesn't necessarily mean to say it's a paid gig. It it just means that they're looking for this kind of talent um, to come on board to actually um, be the founder of one of their org you know organizations and. Uh, Potentially they offer a stipend, but they also expect people to invest quite a bit of their own time into that mix and undergo a, an acceleration process of sorts. So the way the accelerators and various other venture building organizations operate has evolved a lot um, and now sees the founder as one of many roles within the organization that they're looking to build. So yeah, I've actually, I've, um, I've already started to collaborate with this co-founder and this one. Um, and so these are quite mature founders that kind of know what they need and are actually able to articulate it in like a job description. Um, but from reading these job descriptions, they're looking to fill knowledge gaps and technical gaps. They're looking to expand or plug holes in their network um, and just kind of, yeah, leverage off what's ever available to accelerate them. So they're almost like creating a, bespoke accelerator around themselves and a lot of these guys have you know scaled to seven figures in the past and so they, they kind of know what they're doing and they know how much work's involved and uh, they're looking to kind of expedite that quite considerably um so if we're not gonna put a job ad out via linkedin what are some of the other ways that we can um how else can we find people um so in the past i've used a combination of um, tools. LinkedIn is one of them. So I reached out to Mark South, who is now the COO of Business Station. So I'm still very much in partnership with them. It's been a couple of years, so everything's gone pretty well. Um, QI Hub, which I'll open um, in on the coming slides, which is like an ecosystem platform. So you can kind of see who's doing what um, and see yeah, in each vertical and try to get an understanding about uh, the level of sophistication of all the founders in the kind of co-founder talent pool. And then speed networking is another one. So we're just about to launch um, a Queensland-wide innovation um, networking forum. So a, a whole bunch of individuals from across Queensland in particular all the way from Burley up to Thursday Island. I'm not sure how many we'll get from Thursday Island. Um, we'll be able to collaborate, uh, meet 
meet one another um get some peer advisory done maybe do a little bit of matchmaking maybe pass some contacts uh, between each other just co-create value in various ways uh so yeah we're definitely looking forward to having running that one um oh there's a question yeah yeah that's right qi hub is specific to queensland specifically but some of the american cities use the same technology the same platform um i can't remember which ones there yeah it is uh but there will probably be an equivalent in canada and the us as well um so yeah um definitely look for the equivalents uh, we can jump on um, the Ramen Life website, which is actually the platform which is customized or white labeled by the city or the state um, to take a look at what other you know, countries are currently served by this particular ecosystem platform. So it's a platform that brings all of the information or well, as much as exists pretty much um, about you know, the founders, the, the ventures, the funding rounds, the investors. Um, so if you're an investor, you'd also want to be on there. All the events. So some of you guys would have actually found me by going on to QI Hub and finding this <laughs> presentation there. Then there's also Shaper, which is like Tinder for business people. The only issue is um, if you don't know who you're looking for, then you'll find millions of people to you know potentially partner with. Um, but um, it'll be like going on a million first dates. So that's one of the things that um, I always kind of, I don't know, caution um, founders about, like when you first start out in business, everyone seems like they could be your partner. <laughs> um, and um, But there are better and more aligned partners um, if you know who you're looking for, right? So the first comment on the slide is like, you can always look for new partners. Um, using any of the platforms, but don't discount all of the people that you've already met. If you've been on the earth for more than two or three decades, you probably know a lot of people already and a, quite a lot of quite useful people. Um, so before you go out and try and kind of generate more contacts, um, you know, take stock of who you already need, uh, know, right? Go into LinkedIn, go to the people search, type in a particular, um, you know, uh, keyword that relates to what you're doing, um, and um, see if and you know you, you've got anyone that uh, matches those criteria. So I'll show you with my um, the kind of keywords that I use when I go out searching for new collaborators or uh, you know just new connections. Um, who how I get a little bit more targeted with that approach. So yeah, you've probably got dozens, if not hundreds of useful contacts already. Um, there could be overchoice and definitely Shaper provides a huge amount of overchoice. And then you've also got a recency bias. So people forget about the people that they met 12 months ago or 18 months ago. And they're, you know, pretty much the people that come into contact with them, you know, an hour ago are the ones that's top of mind. Um, and it's also the case that if you're strategic about it and you know who you're looking for, you might be able to ask your, you know, a war, someone that you've already recently been in contact with to make an introduction to a very specific person. Um, and that actually gives you a lot more credibility when you actually come to talk to that person. So you might not have your business partner or co-founder or, you know, desired co-founder or partner. Um, as a first degree contact, but it might be as a secondary contact. Um, and so that means, yeah, we can use intermediaries or you know, friends and family and, and other business partners to actually make those strategic introductions at different times. So that's, a, that's kind of a network building tip. Um, as I mentioned, often what we're seeing, and it makes sense because until you've got kind of like a reasonably mature um, strategy. What ends up happening is you can run around like a headless chicken trying to partner with a whole variety of different business partners, co-founders, um, maybe you haven't got 100% clarity on your customer segments yet. So one of the things that I try to help uh, founders do is get a lot more clarity with all of these dimensions. Um, so yeah, I'll give you an example of 
uh, you know, kind of like the customer segmentation that I've applied to who I like to partner with uh, and who I like to serve as an end customer. Well, actually, no, I, I provide the end customer segmentation. Um, and the reason why I do that is so that I can provide it to business partners and if not co-founders, and they can actually think about who they know that matches the criteria that I've identified um, and have segmented uh, quite clearly. So what causes the, the headless chicken syndrome uh, amongst founders is they don't know what their business model is yet, so they haven't really mapped it out, or they may have mapped it out, but they haven't clarified it, or they may have clarified it, but they haven't optimized it. So, you know, they're, they've got work to do on that business model. Um, and even if they know what their business model is, maybe they don't have enough specificity around who needs to be involved in order to operate that business model. And then even if they know who to kind of approach, maybe they don't know yet how to structure or shape a symbiotic relationship with a partner or, or, or a co-founder type um, partner. So there's all these barriers um, to actually having your business operate as a well-oiled machine, a network building machine effectively that uh, seeks out all the right people and engages them in the right kind of ways. Um, but it's a struggle that we all kind of face as we grow and we mature as business owners. So how I do it personally, how do we find people of interest on LinkedIn who we could potentially work with? Sometimes I use the word co-founder and I say, you know, sometimes I go into the actual jobs tab. So not the people's tab, but the jobs tab and actually search for co-founders. Um, Cause at least those people that are searching for co-founders know that they need help. Um, and yeah, I find that people that are, um, are at that stage of knowing that they need help are also willing to collaborate um, in a variety of ways with how I'm happy to collaborate so we'll, I'll, I'll dig into that a little bit more later. So say that we're doing Australia. Um, I like to run through um, with founders what their top LinkedIn keywords might be, particularly if it's a B2B business or a B2B2C business or a B2B2B business, right? So some of my top keywords, although I actually track about 20, include innovation and business model. So if I just look at business model um, and I go Australia wide and uh, first degree contacts, then all of these people come up, right? So I can potentially have productive conversations with all of these people about business models. The only other component is how warm are these people? So the person that I've had the most interactions with is actually in Sydney, but I uh, haven't really communicated with him um, in any great depth recently. So then you scroll through these 347 or 49 results and go, okay, well, who have I kind of rubbed shoulders with in the, or interacted with in the recent past? One of the key tactics, I think, um, is how do, you, how do you create that engagement from nothing, right? How do you create a trigger event for someone to start to get interested in wanting to at least talk to you and understand a little bit about what you could potentially do together. Um, so sometimes that's applying to a co-founder job in my case, um, and then explaining that, you know, I can still help. I just can't help as a full-time or part-time co-founder, but I've actually helped uh, hundreds of startups in the past, and you might get quite a bit of value out of interacting with me um, in the way that I've been able to kind of collaborate. So yeah, Australia, keywords, first contact, connections, and also someone that you've either met in person, um, had a Zoom call of at least 30 minutes, uh, know, like, and trust. Uh, those are my kind of criteria. And the last time you made contact, it's probably 12 to eight, 18 months down the track. After that stage, people start to disengage completely and start to forget about you unless you're popping up in the bloody LinkedIn feed all the time. Um, and the other way, of course, is to post a job for a co-founder and see what happens. And generally, it, it, you know, there's a huge amount of people that reach out, interestingly, based on my conversations with the people that have posted a job for a co-founder. So it's quite interesting how uh, effective that strategy can be. Um, 
So let's move on to the next one. It's not going to let me do it. Oh, wait. Okay, QI Hub. So I'll just open QI Hub just to show you what it looks like. It's a thing. Um, so this is for Queensland. They've also got one for Sydney and Western Sydney and Newcastle. Uh, I'm trying to bring it to Perth at the moment, just so that we're, but it's a pretty powerful platform. It's like a hub for the whole of, you know, all the Queensland innovators and startups. You know, you've got a dashboard, you can search people, you can search startups, you can talk to other founders, a uh, bunch of resources, events, you know, there are accelerating programs, there are jobs that relate to startups. Investors can have their pages you know, be listed here, co-working spaces are listed here. Um, and it's all kind of community managed by Advanced Queensland, so the government. So if we were to look at other geographies that use the same platform, try to cater to our international crowd, um, there could be some in Canada as well. Um, so Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Orlando, and some from uh, Kobe and Japan, Sydney, Queensland, Newcastle, and there's probably going to be more, um, but I'm just not sure which ones there, there are. But it just, what this platform does really well is surfaces very early stage opportunities. So people progressively add themselves um, as they become a founder, and then they're kind of what we're trying to do is plug them into all the support services that are available to them at their various stages, right? Um, and most of these people being founders uh, have founder experience in the past. And then you can go into this advanced tab and then you can see what they're actually looking for. So um, yeah, they tend to want to meet co-founders quite a bit. So there's 463 that have founder experience that want to um, engage with co-founders or about a quarter of them are look actively looking for co-founders at this moment in time. And sometimes you, what you'll get is people from Melbourne joining for some reason, but actually Melbourne isn't using the platform just yet. I don't know why, but occasionally you'll get people from other parts of the, of the country, but this one should be predominantly focused on Queensland. So it's mainly Brisbane or Townsville or Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, that kind of thing. So definitely worthwhile taking a look at who else is doing something similar to what you're doing, because I often come across duplicates of people doing very similar things. And sometimes they can work together in some capacity. They don't necessarily need to get married and become co-founders, which is the most extreme version. Although here we go, looking for a co-founder to join our startup. So I should reach out to that guy. <laughs> um, he's definitely in, oh wait, no, he's not in my surface area. He's in um, Newcastle, so I can't serve him, unfortunately. Anyway, maybe in the future, he'll uh, we'll cross paths. Um, and then people actually create these profiles and you can see in a little bit more detail, um, Oh yeah, I was talking to someone similar just, just before actually, Bootstrap founder of Gig Economy Recruitment Marketplace, Aircruiter. Yeah, so you can see a little bit more about them. You know, they're in what kind of skills they've got, what kind of marketing capabilities and technology backgrounds and various other things and what kind of markets they have exposure to and understanding of. So yeah, you can actually get quite a bit of information out of these people. And if you go contact, um, then you can message up to about three or four of these people. So yeah, if you're not on QI Hub and you're from Queensland or from Sydney or from you know Newcastle, then you might consider it. It's uh, not a bad place to be, and definitely like a um, bit of a center of gravity for um, the uh, you know innovation ecosystem. Uh, okay, so. Back to the presentation. So we've already run through that. Um, and if you've got any questions on any of that, just stick your hand up. Hopefully I'll be able to see you. So the next question is, how do we make sure that they are the right people from a strategic standpoint? So in order to understand who you need um, as part of your um, operating your business model, the first step is to create a business model. <laughs> um, so Typically, I 
try to encourage as many founders who haven't yet gone through this process to do it. And we create a business model within an online collaboration tool called Mural. And um, step one is pretty much for the founder to get all of the strategy out of their head um, onto a one page kind of representation of their business model. Um, and the business model canvas covers nine key kind of building blocks of the business, uh, key partners, key activities, key resources, uh, value propositions, customer relationships, channels, custom segments, cost structure and revenue streams, right? So how I like to describe a business model canvas is it's like a one page business plan, captures all the key uh, building blocks of your business. You can iterate it as you learn. So anyone that's read the kind of lean startup or any of the lean series understands that it's a highly iterative process, but it's not just about MVPs. It's also about, it's, it's about creating minimum viable businesses, right? So there is a place for product within the context of your business or services, and it typically fits within your value propositions and sometimes your key activities. Um, that, that, pretty much constitute your product or service and sometimes your key resources as well. So they're all inter it, it's represented, but it's a subset of a greater um, minimum viable business. So yeah, instead of thinking about it in terms of MVP, I encourage you to expand that definition to MVB, which is uh, minimum viable business. So the benefits are there's a whole variety of these canvases. This is the first one that you would take a look at. It's a lot more agile, allows you to update it a lot easier. Um, and um, if you, you have business partners that know how to review one of these, then it's particularly beneficial because what they can do is they can review what you've actually put in your business model canvas and challenge and help you iterate and mature the core of your business, which of course is that business model. Cool. So I will send you guys a copy of this. And I can also send you um, a link to an electronic copy if you so wish, and you can have a play around and create a business model canvas for yourself within Mural, it's all free. Um, so I just wanted to talk about how um, co-founders slash business partners might benefit you within the context of your business model. So the people part of your, um, of your canvas are obviously your key partners and your customer segments. Um, and sometimes what we can do in order not to need so much startup capital or venture capital or whatever it is, angel investment, you can sometimes tap into the resources of your, the people that you put in your key partner square. So these are typically either individuals or more preferably organizations because organizations tend to have, uh, they tend to be better resourced than your solopreneurs, uh, more people, more projects, more you know, infrastructure, more, more money, everything. Um, and um, what I find is that this is the most poorly understood of all the squares within the business model canvas. Although in my experience, when founders try to fill it in, uh, there's typically improvements that we can make across the entire board in terms of alignment, in terms of optimizing, you know, the answers to the questions that are posed by these um, by these squares. And there's also, um, it's also the case that we can break down these squares into their subcomponents, right? So when I, um, every time someone fills out a key partner square, it, uh, they fill it out slightly differently to the last founder. Some people have a lean towards trying to partner with um, technology providers, engineers, you know, people that are involved in product development and that kind of stuff. I would typically consider these to be more like suppliers. So sometimes I remove them completely from the board and I put them on the operating model canvas instead. Um, and some other people have biases towards partnering with other kinds of organizations. The way I think of um, key partners is a little bit different, which is um, I either use key partners to kind of co-create something new with or to um, start to facilitate a whole variety of different uh, cross referrals on my behalf. I'll just see how I'm doing for time because it seems like we're running a little low. I think someone needed to um, 
yeah, needed to leave, uh, but yeah, I'm sure it will catch up in, in the coming days or weeks. So I'll just reshare my screen. Um, yeah, this is starting to get a little bit more into the details now. So um, let me just reshare my screen because that disrupted me a bit. Um, so yeah, these are the kind of uh, key partners that um, I like to see on someone's business model canvas. You know, who are you co-creating a uh, product or service to deliver to an end customer? Uh, who um, are you leveraging to build your network and to connect to more key partners and more customer segments? Get those warm introductions. Um, and also I break down the key partners and analyze them in all sorts of interesting detail from a distribution of a revenue, brand equity, technology, and an investment um, perspective, right? And so, yeah, typically why, what we're able to overcome through use of this is, uh, through use of this business model plan, but is to start to get clearer and clearer and clearer about who exactly our key partners are and who exactly our customer segments are um, in all sorts of detail. And that makes our job a lot easier. It means that we have having to have less kind of endless copies so uh, you saw this um, image here, headless chicken having endless coffees <laughs> or virtual coffees with a whole variety of different people that they probably, if they'd done some strategy work, would probably skip and move on to some higher value conversations. So what is a cross-referral uh, partnership? It's, um, so th this is kind of championed by the, uh, networking organizations like your BNIs and your BXs and your District 32s. It's where you've got uh, a relationship with a similar type of business. So you might be a residential builder and then an architect can cross refer. So one gets a project, then they can appoint the other one and vice versa. Web designer, web developer, you know, you need both in order to, unless you've got them integrated within the one organization, although often they are actually two separate entities, accountant and bookkeeper. Sometimes they're one and the same. Other times you can actually cross refer and accountants of different types. So one that specializes in this area and that area, um, they can cross refer uh, within their own kind of micro discipline of business, right? Um, and I think people underestimate how powerful this can potentially be um, if it's done strategically. So warm introductions, uh, can be extremely beneficial, uh, can result in a huge amount of deal flow happening. Uh, but it's also important to be extremely targeted. And that's why we look at the business model canvas first. And then introductions naturally follow that. Uh, but just to re-emphasize, like most small business owners really don't know exactly who they're looking for. Um, and they radically underestimate how valuable a targeted contact with um can actually be because it starts it's potential to start a new uh, business relationship altogether that's kind of um you know mutually beneficial and mutually productive um so when i i won't go into i'll skip over this slide a little bit so i created a customer referral profile so that i could explain to my referral partners who i'm looking for right so that if they see this person or someone that seems to have these characteristics, then they'll understand exactly, um, you know, that an introduction should be made at that moment in time. So typically the five dimensions I look at or five types of segmentation I apply is geographic first, and then firmographic, what kind of organization I like to um collaborate with. At the moment, I'm looking at the small end of town and uh, I understand the most about professional services, other business advisory kind of outfits and, you know, B2B organizations. And then I explain the kind of characteristics from a demographic standpoint that I look for in my customer referrals. Um, psychographics, how they think and behaviors, how they behave. Right. So I'm happy if they just get these three one, these three right. And then um, I can look at the rest in the context of a discovery call. All right. So just to give you a quick overview of a partnership 
a co-founder-like partnership model I've come up with to work very efficiently with um, uh, you know, startups and founders that are really early stage, don't have a huge amount to expend, uh, they're a bit time poor, um, but they need kind of a level of support um, with getting clarity, but also getting out there into the market and, and doing a bunch of business development and progressively, you know, deepening their market penetration. So typically what I do is I invite these founders, we go through the business model clarification process. And by that stage, after three or so sessions, I know a bit about them. I can see how they think. Uh, there's transparency into what their business is, not just from, oh, it's a, it's a digital transformation consultancy. It's not just a generic understanding. It's more like, okay, this is how Maureen thinks about her digital transfer, uh, you know, transformation consultancy. And this is how she sees it mapped out. Then we work together to kind of co-create that strategy on the, on the business model canvas. And then once we've got it to, you know, maybe we've iterated it a few times, maybe we've added a few elements, maybe we've moved stuff around a little bit. It kind of has a shape that makes sense. The strategy kind of, uh, at least theoretically, um, stands up on its own two feet. Um, so then what I do for certain clients that are very well aligned, I will help them get even more granular in terms of what they're looking to achieve um, using some other visual strategy canvases, using what I call the Dream 20 strategy, uh, creating ideal customer referral personas. Um, and then I look into my LinkedIn and then I try to match make them <laughs> with their customers, co-creation key partners, cross-referral key partners, a variety of other individuals that will help them accelerate that execution piece. So it's progressively improving um the uh you know strategy side of things and then helping them execute uh, on a really clear plan or a progressively clear plan rather and then understanding you know every week or two we'll catch up and let's hear i'll ask them like how did it go with um a particular individual you know that i introduce you to and they'll be able to give clear feedback as to whether it worked in the way that we had hoped or maybe they don't quite know um, you know, how to structure a partnership with this individual. So we might go and look at that. Um, and yeah, just progressively undertake a bit of a venture building exercise. So it's quite methodical. Uh, probably don't have a huge amount more time to cover these details, uh, but just some principles about how to make sure it's highly productive. So always need to make sure timing and contacts are valued because Part of the value that you trap or capture within an organization is your contact and client list and your relationships needs to be valued. Um, align your pricing strategy with value creation. So the more value you create, the more theoretically you should be charging. Um, if you're charging your, well, I mean, sometimes it's the case, like traditionally co-founders um, haven't been charging each other in any great deal, but um, sometimes it's an asymmetric relationship. Uh, often it will be. And so sometimes um, there's an exchange of value, which could be monetary or uh, or in terms of, um, you know, well, well targeted contacts. So the way that I typically structure pricing um, for collaborating with small businesses and startups is like, don't charge too much. And then there's going to be a value exchange, which is mainly about cross referral. Uh, we just got to, how do we get to do this with you and how much would it cost? Uh, okay, that's a, it is a good question. Um, so the first stage is to have um, just a quick question for you, Maureen. Have you gone through the digital solutions program before? Have you had like one on one mentorship? Um, through that, uh, through digital solutions? Maybe you can type or I can unmute it for you. One session. Okay. So what you could potentially do is you could have your second and third session with me um, if unless you've already organized to have it with someone else. And it, yeah, within two sessions, we should be able to get in place a bit of a business, uh, business model canvas. 
Um, and then, yeah, I will look at my contact list and see if I've got uh, a, a lot of good contacts for you uh, based on who we decide that you need. And if I do, then I'm happy to kind of uh, progress and start to make introductions. Um, I, of course, I know the, the Gold Coast uh, pretty well. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you afterwards. We'll continue to uh, you know, progress through the rest of the material. But first step is, yeah, get that business model in place. Second step is, let's see if um, you know further collaboration makes sense based on who I know and who I can introduce you to. Fantastic. All righty. The other one is like, make, we have to make sure that if we partner in this way, that each partner does what they say they're going to do. And so in a certain respect, what I've found I, I've been able to do with some small businesses and some, some startups is they start off as, as digital solutions clients, and then we can turn them into partners that have other attributes, not just someone that turns up and has a mentoring session or whatever, but actually there's some kind of strategic alignment which um, we can uh, and deepen the relationship over the course of time. That's all cool. Um, and yeah, so what I do, um, I even implement a certain level of, uh, <laughs> sorry, some crazy pictures here. Um, yeah, I, I've actually got a spreadsheet where I can track who I've made referrals to. So in this case, to Perth and X, I've um, kind of referred Lovish, uh, Santha, Kylie B, Kyle, and Trisha, or at least I think I can. And Perth and X has already met with Lovish, Santha, and Kylie B. Um, and so, uh, but I create a pipeline of potential uh, referrals that uh, I could make to Person X. And then Person X would look at all their contacts and reflect on who they could pass my way. And then what happens is you get a level of exponential growth, if, particularly if these, you know, the kind of relationships are ongoing and recurring. So I've created a tool called my cross referral opportunity spreadsheet, um, which I continue, continually update on behalf of the founders that I'm kind of come, come into contact with. And it really shortcuts it accelerates them a lot because they get in front of others very quickly. Um, so yeah, what this means is for a client, I was looking for people that uh, have experience with ERPs, enterprise resource, whatever they are. I don't even know what they are, but they come up in um, <laughs> enterprise resource management, right? Um, so just in Perth alone, um, in my LinkedIn, I've got 44 results. And of those 44 results, about 10 of them are hot or reasonably warm that I would feel comfortable with, um, you know, being able to reach out and having a good chance of connecting the two individuals so that they could meet. So the more that you do this, the more potential mutual growth you can get. <laughs> um, again, provided, you know, you don't, there's no attrition of clients. Um, so all you're wanting to do is you're turning one client account into more than one client account. So every referral that you get, so say that I work, work with Maureen and she gave me five referrals that stuck, um, and then she continued on, she would turn from one client account six, and that's obviously a 600% in <laughs> improvement just based on that one relationship. So, but it does depend on how deep my well is for Maureen and how deep hers is for mine. Um, so yeah, that's all, that's what we need to uh, keep into consideration. So what I found broadly speaking, so people don't know what their business model is sometimes or often in small business, they might not know who needs to operate that business model, don't know how to foster those relationships, um, but they also don't necessarily know how to give referrals in a way that actually helps another founder succeed. Um, and so that's one of the things I want to help instill in the founders that I come into contact with is like, how do we get the ecosystem working the way uh, it should do, right? So yeah, anyway, there's a lot of value there. Alrighty, guys, do you have any questions before I um, just kind of round things out and uh, we go away and uh, think about all the kind of content that we've covered today? 
any any questions that come to mind or is it all pretty much uh, self-explanatory? Just wait a second there. Um, yeah, and and if it's not, just um, <laughs> I'll send you a, an email just um, asking you to, well, actually providing this presentation, any of the resources that I think are relevant. You can always hit reply and just tell me like, oh, you know, can you clarify this or, um, you know, uh, what kind of opportunities uh, do you see in this space or whatever the case may be. Yeah, th thanks for the feedback, Jeff. Uh, there's always a million different ways of looking at all of these things. And that's why it's so good to have kind of peers helping each other and passing information and, and you know, showing people new ways of doing things. Um, just before we wrap, I just thought I'd introduce, uh, invite you guys, particularly if you're from Queensland. Um, if you're from WA, then just <laughs> button lippy lippy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just um, uh, we're la launching online speed networking, which is another way of finding others, other like-minded um, kind of innovators in Queensland. So Maureen, definitely get on this one if you can. I'll send the link out as well via an email. But um, yeah, we've got founders all the way from about Kuranda and Townsville and Cairns all the way down to Burley. And we're just trying to get them to um, meet up on a more regular basis to help each other succeed. Um, and also, you know, become familiar with one another so that they might be able to work in some collaborative capacity. So as we've talked about today, you know, you don't need to necessarily always get married with everyone that you meet. But that's not to say that there isn't value there that you can potentially um, not extract, but kind of co-create uh, through collaboration. Yeah. And yeah, the opportunities to work with me, you guys already know. So through digital solutions, um, you can do the online speed networking. You can do the visual strategy canvases with me. So business model canvas, value proposition canvas, and a variety of others. And there's two more workshops. So I'll send those out to you, one happening on Monday, one happening on the next Friday. And then the co beyond digital solutions um, for you know, founders that see the value and are aligned with this way of working, then there's, um, you know, we can catch up on either a weekly, fortnightly, monthly or quarterly basis to just continue, help you can maintain that momentum that you've built. Uh, build that momentum and then maintain it, right? Awesome stuff, guys. Well, thanks so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure to kind of uh, catch back up with you guys and um, thanks for your questions and interactions and I'm sure we will be speaking quite shortly so thanks again bye-bye Oh, Maureen, are you there? Maybe we can talk now. Are you there, Maureen? Yes, I'm so glad you came back to me because I'm thinking to myself, I'll find out from the GC Hub if I still have two sessions left and organise one with you. And then I thought, but I didn't even catch your name. All oh, right. Okay. No worries. Yeah. Yeah, so we run the Digital Solutions Program. They're kind of like a, a provider that helps us co-deliver. Um, my name's Tristan. Um, I would have reached yes. out to you via email. Um, so my name is uh, Tristan Sedicio. Um And if you know when you'd like to book in, we can even book it in now. Um, I've got like... Um, kind of full access to be able to do that, full authority to just get Monday, in on the how does Monday sound? Monday, I'll just check my Monday. Um, just, because I, I think, think you Monday. hit the nail on the head. Like I finished producing the product 
And now I'm really like running around as the headless chook. You so delicately mm. described. <laughs> yeah. We've, <laughs> all, we've all been there. <laughs> what to do next. And I don't have a business plan, so that's probably why. That's okay. So we can get you upgraded straight to the business model canvas. Um, so I can do, so I can probably, so it's the 20, 20th. So I can do between 2 and 3 p.m. your time. Yeah, I'll just double check my diary. Hold on, I'm pretty sure I'm free. So I'm not that busy. I mean, I am, you know, but um, two and three, except on uh, Monday. Yep, and then the next one is. Then I'm just between... checking Monday. Yeah. No, I'm free. Two or three Monday is perfect. Two or three. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. That would just the only the only issue is that uh, I'd have three on our meetings back to back which I can do but I've also got after 4 p.m so before uh between 4 and 7 p.m I can do as well so if there's a time what would you prefer because you're the one who probably needs a speaking break more than I will yeah yeah maybe maybe um 5 to 6 p.m Brisbane time if that works for you Is yeah that, that works fine yeah yeah that's good I haven't got anything on Monday I've got a clear diary so um that would be good Awesome. And it'd be better if you're not exhausted from talking and you've had breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I've had uh, four hours back to back and it's it could shatter you. <laughs> uh, uh, I know, I'm happy. a teacher. Usually I'm a teacher, when I'm, but I've just taken some long service leave to try and finish setting up my business. And as yeah. you can tell, my voice is always croaky, you know, talking six hours in a row, six hours straight. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. <laughs> So I know no what you worries. mean. No worries. What was your second name, uh, Maureen? Plowman. P L O W M A N. Plowman. Maureen Plowman. Okay. So I'll pop yeah. you in for Monday, Monday 20th. Um, and if you'd like to send me any information, um, just should provide context, you can hit me up sure. at businessstation.com.au. So, so we, are you we, sending me your email address or did you want to take mine down or how would you like that to happen? I've probably already got yours um, just because I've got access to... Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that is true. Yeah. I'll just double just check that I've got yours. Uh, yeah, 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 I would have sent you the link and I would have done some other stuff as well. Let me just grab you on Maureen Plowman and see what it comes up with, what computer says. Oh no, okay. I've got it as Happy Heels. Happy Heels Oz. Happy Heels Oz, that's, okay. Yeah, that's the business right. email. Right, okay. So you've got two accounts here. You've got more Maureen Plowman 0905, and that's what you've got the reg it registered under. So what I'm gonna yes. do now. Did you meet with um Sharon Honeybell? Um, is she got beautiful blonde hair and I've met yeah, with so yeah. many people that my mind is spinning with all the people that are so lovely and so helpful. I think I did meet with Sharon, yes, she's really nice. But okay. I didn't get any um, services from her, just, you know, met her socially. So you met with um, uh, Ronwin, is that right? That was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster. I mean, she was a lovely person, but um, at the end, I said to her, Bromer, I really don't want you to do anything for my business at all. She didn't understand my business. Um, and it was a bit of a shame because I spent a lot of time with her and she spent a lot of time with me. But at the end, she didn't understand my business and I didn't like the way she was wanting me to go with my business. So it wasn't very effective at all. In fact, it was just a waste of time. Oh, that's a shame. That's it is a shame. a shame, but that's, you know, life. <laughs> so and it's such a shame because I ended up having to set up my own web page and set up my own Instagram and set up my own Facebook, which were the things that I was hoping that she would do for me. But, you know, she just didn't see the business the way I saw the business. And uh, so we didn't really get anything done. 
Okay. So as far as I can see, you've done three with Ronwin. Is that right? In 2022? 2022. Um, 2022, yeah. With the ABN of... Um, oh, right. Well, that must be it then. I must have done three with her. What a waste of time. Oh. So how do I get to spend uh, time with you then if I've already done my three sessions? Well, there's a few ways. Um, you could potentially get another three if um, you've got another ABN or you've got like a life partner or a business partner that has an ABN that you can borrow. I can see. Yeah, that I have a partner. I can borrow his ABN. Okay, so what I'll send, I'll send you some instructions about how to get re-registered. Um, right. All you need to do is you need to provide. Um, an ABN that you'd never used before. And also, yeah. you'd be able to actually, yeah, and an, an e email. So, a new email. Okay, so I could use Happy Heels and a new ABN. Yeah. yeah. Right. One, one of the reasons why um, I think it's really good to use a, a business model canvas is because you're the owner of that tool. Um, I can make uh, I can make observations, but um, it's a co-creation activity. It's not like I'm going to say, no, Maureen, you shouldn't be selling to this segment. You should be selling to that segment. Um, it's more like, um, okay, you've identified these segments that you think you can sell to. How about this one and this one? Okay, okay, we can consider those ones. Okay. And then it's very, it's much more consultative than um, just uh, consulting verbally you get what i mean and you get a visual output as well so it's a mm. it's quite a different different kind of approach i think than the one that Bronwyn is made, uh, is having because i was so unhappy with Bronwyn, did i get those refunded <laughs> i'm not 100 percent sure uh it would be a little bit difficult <laughs> um but yeah. um what, what i would suggest is that our best that is what I could do is I could give you a, a coupon for your first session for the new area. Right. So I will send that to you in an email and then you can um, book your session in. And yeah, just try and um, once you've done that, just send me an email to say, uh, Tristan, I've, um, I've re-registered. Um, yeah, all right. Book okay. me in no ASAP and then I'll book you in ASAP. Um, okay, I won't, all right. I won't be able to book you in more than until uh, like the start. Yeah, and I'll, yeah, and also I won't be able to book you in uh, within twenty four hours of the session. So I might book it some other time, but then we can shift it in the calendar. It's just the way the yeah, software. I, I know, I know, I understand all these things. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll have a look at doing that over the weekend. Sure. Sure. I'll get we'll, email we'll do the best we can. Do I have to email? Would I just email them or would I ring them or would I go in? For, for what? Or do I just give you the new ABN and the new email name or do I have to go and give it to I will, you? I will send you a link that you can just do it yourself. It um, oh, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Cool. Just a quick set of questions. Take about five minutes. Um, Excellent. Set up a new account and then um, post that point, we will uh, kind of, uh, yeah, get you in on the next available opportunity, um, yeah. even if manually. Right. Okay? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Tristan. Bye. Great to meet you, Maureen. Take care of yourself and uh, Bye. speak to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.